Welcome to problem 1.7 of John Townsend's A Modern Approach to Quantum Mechanics. So, let me just get to the page here. This problem states that we have a beam of spin one half particles sent through a series of three stern Gerlach devices, as illustrated here. So, the first device is a SGZ device, meaning that it's oriented in the Z direction, whatever we define it as. And it blocks all particles coming out with a spin of minus h bar over two, but transmits particles through um, with a spin of plus h bar over two, where essentially particles in the plus Z state go through. The second device is an SGN device. So the stern Gerlach device is oriented in the N, N direction. Um, so in this case, it's basically like a parameterized device uh, because in here, um, the states depend on the, the values of theta and phi. So it's kind of an arbitrary direction device and it blocks the particles coming out with a minus n state and allows particles coming through within the plus n state. And then the final device is a z device again, and it blocks the particles coming out with a plus z um, state and allows particles coming out with a minus z state. So the, the questions are, what fraction of the particles transmitted by the first device will survive the third measurement? That's part A. Part B is, how, what, what must the angle theta be of this device um, to maximize the number of particles that are transmitted in the final device? And then what is that uh, value of theta? And what, what is the actual fraction of, of the, the particles given that maximum value for theta? And then part C is what fraction of the particles survive the last measurement if we just take the SGN device out from the experiment? So put the book down, get the work. So just real quick, I have drawn a diagram here um, not the best, but it'll do. We have the state plus n, which we have been working with quite a lot in uh, you know these first uh, this first chapter. So we have you know we get particles in plus z coming out from this first device. So what fraction of these plus z particles make it to our, you know make it to 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 the end of the experiment basically? What what percentage? So that's essentially asking. You know, we need to first find out what percentage of these particles come out of this device, and then that that'll be one probability. And then what percentage of those particles that come out of this device come out of the next device? And just from basic probability theory, if you want to find the percentage coming out of this device, you basically multiply the probability. So, you know, we have a hundred percent of our particles here. You know, we'll get some fraction of those here and then another, subs another fraction of those particles here. And so we essentially multiply the probability that we get this state out of here times the probability that we get this state out of here. In mathematical terms, what I'm saying is we, we need to calculate the probability that we measure plus the state plus n um, from particles in the state plus z. And mathematically, what that's saying is we just you know, take the magnitude square of the inner product. So this is saying mathematically what this means is given that we have particles in the, in the state plus Z, what's the probability, or really this is the probability amplitude at the moment because we haven't taken the magnitude square, but what is the probability that we find the state, we find particles in plus Z and the state plus N? So essentially it's just doing an inner product. So this is the uh, bra version of um, plus N, which actually, I realized I don't have a minus i there. So that's just a little mistake, which doesn't really matter in the end. And then all that times plus z, because you know I know what I know how to write the state plus n in, in terms of plus z. So this makes the the multiplication here easy. So what you get is you know the bra kit here is one, so you get cosine of theta over two, and this term cancels at zero. So we just get um, Cosine of theta over two, take the magnitude square of that, you get cosine squared theta over two. So 
the probability that the, the, the percentage of particles basically that come out of this device from our original number is cosine squared of theta over two. So the, the percentage depends on this value of theta, whatever value of, uh, value of theta this is for what we choose for the device. Um, so now that we have that probability, we need to find, okay, given that we have particles in this state, what's the probability that we find them in this state? Because that's what's actually coming out, minus e. So mathematically what that means is the inner product of plus n and minus z here. So just quickly doing that, in our, like, I can just do that in my head, right? Like you just take this and, and, and multiply it by, uh, you know, you have a bra minus z. So this term is zero, that's a one, and you just get this term. Um, so it's just picking out that component is what this is doing. So you get e to the i phi and sine of theta over two. To get the probability, you just take the magnitude squared of that and you just get sine squared of theta over two because when you take the magnitude of the complex number, um, you flip the sine of the i and the, the exponential here cancels out. So you just get the sine squared of theta over two. So the percent of particles that make it to the end here, given that this is our starting uh, particle state, is just the first probability, uh, the first percentage of particles that come out of here times the percentage of those particles that come out of here. So that's just the two, multiplying those two probabilities together. So we get cosine squared of theta over two times sine squared of theta over two. And to make this slightly simpler, um, you can use the, uh, I think it's the half angle formula. So yeah, let me see here. So yeah, the half angle formula, if you look it up, um, you can write cosine squared as one plus cosine of theta over two, and you can write sine squared of theta over two as one minus cosine of theta all over two. And so just doing that math here, that'll be one half plus cosine of theta all over two times one half minus cosine of theta over two. And then what we get here is a fourth minus cosine squared over four. Um, and then factoring out a fourth, you get one fourth times one minus cosine squared. And one minus cosine squared is just sine squared. So you get one fourth times sine squared. And so that's actually the simplest, you know, that's pretty simple way to express the, the, the fraction of particles that make it to the end. Um, it just depends on the sine squared theta here. And so really the, uh, the, the limiting factor here is, you know, what angle we choose for this device. Now to maximize the number of particles, um, we need to maximize this number. So what angle theta makes this number the largest it can be? Well, if you choose theta equal to zero, if you, if you remember sine of zero is zero. So we, if that's the case, then um, we get zero particles, 0% make it. If we choose, what's the maximum value for sine of theta? The maximum value is, sine of theta, uh, is pi over two. So if you plug in pi over two, what you get is a one here and then what you have is the percentage of particles that make it, I just denote it as P here, is just a fourth. So if you choose a, a value of pi over two for this device, the maximum numbers we can have, the maximum percentage of particles we can have that make it to the end from this set of particles is a fourth of the original set of particles. Now, what if the SGN device is completely removed? So we just take this out. Then what we get is the plus Z particles output from this device getting fed in to another Z device. And um, yeah, that's basically what we have. And, and since this, uh, the plus Z here is blocked off and only transmits minus Z, essentially what we're asking here is what percentage of these plus Z particles are found in the minus Z state? In this case, what we get it's just the inner product of plus c and minus c, which we know is zero. That, 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 that's our basis, state, basis states, and um, we, we know those are orthogonal to, to each other, so we get zero. And that's just intuitively, it's like, okay, we just measured this particle being on plus z. If we send it directly into another z device again, it's still going to be plus z. Um, so it won't be minus z. There's zero percent chance that you'll find these particles that come out of plus z put them into a, the same device again, and you'll find the minus Z, the, chance, the probability is zero. So that's, sorry about that. <clears throat> that's
that's essentially what this is saying mathematically. So, yeah, that's about it. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. And I will see you guys on problem 1.8.